We get one tenth when we divide one by ten. So here we have one big rectangle. And if we divide it into ten pieces and keep only one of those pieces, we have one tenth. We can write one tenth as a decimal. That's 0 0.1. So the digit after the decimal point is the tenths digit. So what we've shown here is that 1 divided by 10 equals 0 0.1, or 1 whole divided by 10 is 1 tenth. We get 1 hundredth when we divide 1 by 100. So again, we've got one big rectangle, and if we divide that into 100 pieces and keep only one piece, then we have 1 hundredth. So, we can write 1 hundredth as a decimal as well. That's 0 0.01. Remember, the first digit after the decimal point tells us how many tenths we have, and then the second digit after the decimal point tells us how many hundredths we have. So, what we've shown here is that 1 divided by 100 equals 0 0.01, or 1 whole divided by 100 equals 1 hundredth. We can also get 1 hundredth when we divide 1 tenth by 10. So in this rectangle, we can see that one part out of 10, or 1 tenth, is shaded. If we divide this shaded part into 10 and keep only 1 tenth, then you can see that we have 1 hundredth. We have the same amount of the rectangle shaded as we did on the previous page. So 0 0.1 divided by 10 equals 0 0.01, or 1 tenth divided by 10 is 1 hundredth. So we know our place values for thousands, hundreds, tens and ones. Then we have a decimal point to separate our ones from our tenths. And now we know that the place value after the tenths is the hundredths place. So we know that if we have one thousand, that's the same as having ten hundreds. If we have one hundred, that's the same as having ten tens. One ten is the same as ten ones, but this carries on into decimal place values as well. So if we have one one, that's the same as having ten tenths. And then if we have one tenth, that's the same as having ten hundredths. We can also go the other way. So if we've got ten hundredths, we know that's the same as one thousand. Ten tens is the same as one hundred. Ten ones is the same as one ten. And we carry on in the same way going into decimal place values. So if we have ten tenths, that's the same as having one one. And if we have ten hundredths, that's the same as having one tenth. So here we've got two different fraction bars. The top fraction bar is split into 100 pieces, so shows us hundredths, and then the fraction bar below is split into 10 pieces, so shows us tenths. So, one hundredth is one part out of a hundred. We can count on two hundredths, three hundredths, and you get the idea, so I'll skip through. Nine hundredths, then if we've got ten hundredths, we can see that that's the same as having one tenth. We've got the same amount shaded in both of our rectangles. So we can say that ten hundredths and one tenth are equivalent fractions. Now if we count on, you can see that eleven hundredths is just a little bit more than one tenth. And we can keep on counting, but you'll notice that when we get to twenty hundredths, that's the same as having two tenths. And we could keep on counting, so when we get to thirty hundredths, that's three tenths. You'll notice thirty nine hundredths is actually just a little bit less than four tenths. 
So if we have 40 hundredths, we have a fraction equivalent to 4 tenths. And I'm not going to go through the rest because I think we get the idea. So if you've got 100 hundredths, you've got one whole. And if you've got 10 tenths, again, you've got one whole. 